Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. We're about to go into our praise and worship, and we're asking everyone to participate as we lift up and praise God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The first song will be We Are All in All, or You Are My All in All. Thank you. That's not the next song. No. Oh, we have been the children. The children. The wise man built his house upon the rock. Come on up front, all our Where children. Are the children, come on up. Come on up, everyone. Don't be bashful. Come on. Rain came down and the 
floods came up, the rain came down, and the floods came up, but the house on the rock stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand, the foolish man built his house upon the sand, the foolish man built his house upon the sand, and the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing will come down. The blessings come down and the prayers go up. The blessings come down and the prayers go up. The blessings come down. We're going to ask the congregation to please stand and remain standing as we sing the song, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less Than Jesus Christ and Righteousness. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest man, but holy laid on Jesus' name. When Christ the soul in was I stayed all on the ground, his sinking sand, oh, all the ground, his sinking sand. In every 
Masterin, the Lord is in Holy Temple. The Lord is in His Holy Temple. The Lamb upon his throne, or how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but his own. Let us sing together, please. Crowned him with many crowns.
Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we give you the praise, the honor, the glory that you deserve Amen. upon all other gods, because you are our true God and our creator. Please be with us during this hour of study. Anoint us, O oh Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Open our minds so we can know your will for our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, we can be seated. Good morning, saints. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Amen. Did you come here to have a good time? Amen. Amen. All right. I think we're going to have it. We got with us this morning Dr. Joshua and his um, beautiful, wonderful wife with us. They, they were with us some months ago and, and, and I was really really impressed I said I want to hear him again not only do I want to hear him again I want to hear her again Amen. she going to do some special music for us Amen. the last time she was here I asked her um, does she have any CDs for sale <laughs> but she says no she's not in the recording business she just out to praise the Lord. I said, Amen. Yes. I said, Welcome to them. Now I want to say, Welcome to all of you. Huh? Just welcome you all into the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Hope you had a good week. Hope you're here just to have a good time in the Lord. And I also want to say, Welcome to those who watch us from Sabbath to Sabbath online. They're part of our family. And I want them to know that they're welcome any day they choose to come and be with us. I said, come on out. Um, but a lot of people are watching at home these days. But the Bible tells us that we need not to do what? Forsake assembling ourselves together. God wants us to um, come together and have a relationship and be friends and love each other Amen. in spite yes. of our differences. Amen. We all have them, but we're still called to love one another. Amen. That, that's not going to change. Um, let me see now, we have a few announcements. Let me start off. And we were here, Mr. Jim, myself, my wife, and, and, and a young man named William just waves the night. And I tell you, we were few in number. I, I'm glad the Lord said, where there are three, two or three gathered, that he would be in the midst. Amen. We have one blessed. Mr. Jim, did we do all right? Yes. Oh, he must be out. Anyway, we had a wonderful time. Uh, but Pastor, he had been going away. He went to an. 50th anniversary to a school in Spain where he had graduated and um, he called and texted me and told me that he's back in town but he had to be in Titusville today but he's coming to see us he'll be with us next week but in the meantime um, what I was going to tell you about him well he'll be back next week 75 step in um I want to encourage to come out to prayer meeting. A praying church is a church that will stay together. We've got to pray. Amen. We encourage people to turn in those prayer cards and they turn them in every week and they tell us their problems and, and, and we need to be here on Wednesday night and pray for them. Even though we pray for them before we leave the church, we pray for them 
uh, even right here, I'm um, doing uh, divine art. You know, but where there is much prayer, there is much what? Oh, yeah, I'm glad you said that. I also want to encourage you to come to Sabbath school. You know, I, 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 every time, until they take me down from here, I'm going to encourage that you come to Sabbath school. <laughs> We've been studying the book of Mark, and, and it's been just very interesting. We've been learning so many wonderful things from there. I'm talking about stuff that will help us get ready for the coming of the Lord. And that's what we are here for now. We are here because we believe Jesus is coming soon. So we need to come out and study his word and, um, and, and things that we don't understand. Somebody in the class will understand and you'll leave here with a greater knowledge of the word of God. Now, there are two other things. I may need some help with them. They came to me at last minute telling me that the school has planned a work beat to get ready to open up again. And I think that's going to take place on August the... Anybody knows? Yeah. The work beat. The work beat is Sunday, July 28th from 9 to noon. Oh, that's... The backpack, the, the, the backpack school, that's for community time, that is August the 4th. That's the so they're trying to collect as many backpacks as they can, you know. Generally, every year I go down to uh, Walmart someplace and buy eight or ten of them and turn them into my wife, and she put them out there. And, uh, and I'm, the kids are going to be very, very appreciative of what you can do if you can go get a few backpacks. And, and the, the school is has quite a few kids coming in, now. and the neighborhood <coughs> they also give out some backpacks to them as well. Now, I just think that comes just about to the end of the announcement, unless I've missed something. There's one more announcement. There's one more? Yeah. Concerning? It's concerning women. Yes. This week I got, um, received a, a message, okay? They're going to be having, Florida Conference is going to be having a one day retreat for women and ladies, young ladies and everything. And it is going to be on the 17th of August. And I would encourage every woman that can go there and their young teenagers to be there. It will be a wonderful time. And if you're thinking about that you do not want to take that long distance on the Sabbath morning. There are chalets and all kinds of things up there. So maybe as a group, if we have enough, we can get together and make that arrangement. So we can leave on the Friday and be up there. Okay, so see me, please. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, let me tell you, you look good out there. And um, do we have and first time visitors, first time. I'm looking for somebody who's never been here before, here for the first time. You, you might have to raise your hand or stand up so I can see you. Oh, there we go. Very well. Do we have one? Uh, Amen. Amen. Two? Five. Okay. Very well, Six. sir. Would Six. you tell us about where you're here from? You moved here? Amen. You Adventists? I'm going to be. Amen. Somebody said. He drove all the way from Jacksonville to have a Bible study with Oh, us. I think Amen. I recall him. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. I recall. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, very well. And who, who's the next one? Him. All right, my, my name is Narian Gentius. I'm here with my family. We're visiting from Houston, Texas. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You, you moved here from Houston, Texas? Visiting. Oh, visiting. Yeah. Okay, very well, very well. How, how long are you going to be in the area? Uh, this is my second week. 
Okay, very well. We hope you enjoy yourself here in our worship and tell those folks about us when you get back down there. And whenever you're here in this area again, come back and see us. Amen. We got more. And I, I, I just hope that all of you have a wonderful time today. We got more. How many? Two of us? Four of us. Okay, very well. I'm Maria Anderson and this is my daughter Aria. We're visiting from St. Genevieve, Manitoba in Canada. Amen. 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 We got, you know, we love our visitors. Hi, good morning. And he is my husband, Eliasid, and I am Suleiman. I am from Colombia. I live in Palm Bay, Florida, in the shore of Melbourne, Spanish. Amen. 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 Good morning, happy Sabbath. My name is Kamisha and I'm from Jamaica. Amen. 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 You just visiting here? Good morning, everyone. I'm Carolyn, visiting from Jamaica. Amen. Amen. Hi, good morning. I'm Erilyn. I'm visiting from the Cayman Islands. Amen. 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 Anybody else? I guess that's it, right there. That's it. No. That's it, man. Okay, very well. You know the sad thing about being a visitor? You can only be a visitor once. Visitor once. Yeah. From now on, we're going to consider your family. Just, we just hope that you have a wonderful time. Even after the service here today, there's a lunch over in the gym, always over there. And you all are, you all are invited to come. It's, the, the lunch is primarily for you all. So when you leave here, go over and have a good, When you get finished feeding here, Go feed over there. Amen. Very well. Okay. What we generally do around here at this time is um, we kind of come close to each other and give each other a handshake, a hug, or whatever we can do, and just welcome each other into the house of the Lord. Okay? Welcome into the house of the Lord. Yes. 
is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Sabbath, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath, church. You can do better than that. Happy Sabbath, church. Did you all have a good week? Great. Okay, so I have a story for you today, and the story is from the Bible. But you have to put on your thinking caps, okay? I'm not going to tell you the name. So you're going to listen to the story, and then after, you're going to tell me who the person is, okay? All right. So, this story happened long, long time ago. There was a young man. And this man, he kind of didn't like to help people out, I guess you would say. He's kind of shy and he's just like, when people told him to do things, he's like, ah, I don't think so, that's not for me. But one day, God gave this specific person a message. And God said, I need you to go into the city and tell people about me because they are doing some bad, bad things and they need to know that it's wrong. So he listened to God's message and he thought to himself, I don't know if I want to do that. Those people aren't too friendly. They're mean and they do a whole bunch of bad stuff and I don't want to be associated with that. So he thought and he thought to himself, he's like, should I go? He's like, I don't think I want to go. Then God came back and told him again, I need you to listen and go tell these people about me because I'm going to have to destroy them if they don't listen. So he said, oh, all right, I'll go. I'll go. So he got his stuff together. And then as he was getting ready to go, he thought to himself, you know what? Those people, they're really, what are they? Bad people. I don't want to be associated with bad people. So guess what he did? He said, I'm not going to go. I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to run away from God. So he packed up his stuff. And he looked around. And he thought to himself, God's not going to see me. I'm going to run away. So... He ran and he got on the ship. And guess where the ship was going? In the opposite direction of where he was supposed to go. 
So he thought to himself, <laughs> this is a great idea. So he went on the ship, and as they were traveling, everything was great. The weather was fine. The breeze was blowing in their hair. And then he decided, guess what? I'm so tired from running away from God. I think I'm going to take a nap. So he went, and guess what he was doing? He fell asleep. He fell asleep. So while he was laying down all comfy, guess what happened? A huge storm. And that storm was loud. There was thunder, wind, and lots of rain. And everybody on the ship was so scared. And they thought to themselves, what could have caused this storm? It was so peaceful before. What happened? And they went down and they woke, woke the sky up. He's like, wake up, wake up. There's a storm happening. Do you know anything about this? And he looked outside and he said, mm, maybe. And they said, what do you mean maybe? He said, well, you know what? Um, I may have caused something to occur so this storm happened and they're like what what do you mean please just pray to your god and and, and maybe the situation can be sorted out so he's like ah. you know what he thought about it and he's like you know i don't want to get these gentlemen in trouble so he turned to the captain and said you know what just throw, throw me off the ship and he said what throw you off the ship that's not a good idea and he said, trust me, just throw me off the ship and I'm sure everything will calm down. So guess what they did? Throw them off. The others were like, that sounds like a great idea to us. Let's throw him off the ship. So they threw him off the ship and he was swimming there for a while and swimming and swimming. And as he was swimming, he's like, oh boy, where am I going to go now? And his back was kind of turned. And what he didn't see behind him was something approaching. And it was getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer until ooh, it swallowed him right up. He got swallowed up by a giant fish. Yes. So he was in there and it was dark and it was, what's that, smelly? And he was in there and he's like, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And he was in there and he was thinking, I should have just listened. I should have did what God said. I should have just listened. And he was in there for a while. Now, I'm not going to give you too much details. But eventually, guess what happened? Guess what the fish did? Anybody know? Yes, spit him out on dry land. So he got up and he's just like... He was, I'm sure he smelled pretty, what, stinky. Mm -hmm. But he had a change of heart and decided to do what God said. So he went to this place, this city, and I'm sure he was mumming, I don't want to go to the city. These people are horrible. They're so bad. But he went and he preached. And guess what? The people listened and they repented. So they did the right thing. So I'm going to leave the story there because I want you guys to read about it. But can anybody tell me who the story is about? Okay, we're going to say it on three. Ready? One, two, three. Jonah. Jonah. Yes. Very good. So is it important for us to listen when God tells us to do something? Or even our parents, right? We shouldn't do it. We shouldn't run away and hide. And we should always have a kind heart. And we should share Jesus' love with everybody, okay? So will you do that for me? Will you tell your friends about Jesus? Okay, that's very good. And remember, that story can be found in the Bible. And I always say, that's the best book. So read that story, okay? All right. So who would like to pray? Anybody want to pray?
Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Okay, I'll pray. Is that okay? All right, let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day. Thank you for each boy and girl that is here today. And we pray that, dear Lord, we can share your love with our friends and our family and just shine our light, dear Lord. Please help us to be good and please help us to be attentive and listen to today's message. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, let's go get the offering so we can collect offering. Make sure everybody gets a basket. Here you go. And the yellow one. Oh, here you go. You're welcome. Okay. And just so everyone know, the offering that we're collecting is for the school. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's such a beautiful day outside. Our offering today is um, for the Union Global Cart Partnership Project of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Australia. This offering will support training and education for the Southeastern Asian uh, Union Mission. Uh, focusing on schools and centers of influence in Laos, Thailand, and I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his name, but well, according to the, <laughs> the Florida conference has said this, I'm sorry, um, it's for our local budget and you know that we need all the money that we can get to support our um, efforts in this church. Um, we have that um, big insurance bill that we need to uh, uh, address. And um, I apologize for having the wrong information here. So anyway, will the deacons please come forward?
Father in heaven, we thank you for your endless provision that you provide each one of us. As we offer our tithes and offerings, we know in our hearts we are nothing without you. Father, please accept our offerings as a token of our love. We ask you to bless each one of us and bless the offerings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Again, saints, I know I told you early something about the prayer cards, but I wasn't as thorough as I should have been. And um, but if you filled out one already, we'll pick them up right now. And if you haven't, you still have time to fill it out and turn it in before you leave. We take prayer cards very, very seriously. It's your concerns. And we know that whatever it is that concerns you, it concerns the Lord. Whatever the situation is. Uh, somebody want to tell us um, how good the Lord has been to them this week? I think the young man has the, has the mic. I think there's somebody right behind you, Derek, there.
we'll just take a few testimonies. Okay, I just want to thank the Lord for all the prayers that uh, everybody gave me. And everything is going great. And I'm feeling good. So I'm really praying when I went through my surgery and everything. And everything is really great. I thank all the Lord. I thank everybody for the prayers that they gave me. And everything is really making me feel better. And I feel great. I just wanted to tell you, thank you very much. Amen. I'm telling you, if nothing else would do it, prayer would do it. That old expression says that prayer changes things. You want some changes made? Call out to God. Is there someone else? Yeah, right here, man. Okay, very well. Speak to us. The church family knows that I have a, a five-year-old granddaughter who was diagnosed as a baby with a brain tumor and she's been on chemo and last weekend she was complaining of a headache to her mother and then she stopped eating and this is a child that has a good appetite she wouldn't eat on Monday she started complaining of a headache again at her PPEC and they brought her to me, and I went into grandmother mode, brought her to me, and uh, they, she goes to Arnold Palmer for her chemo. And Arnold was saying, can you get her here? We need to do an MRI. And I couldn't get her there. And in this area, they don't have uh, MRIs for pediatrics. but. Holmes Regional could do a CT and they did a CT and they looked and first they were alarmed by the size of the tumor and then they thought they saw that there was bleeding coming from the tumor mm. and they had Arnold Palmer to send over an ambulance to take us over and the next morning they did a nice lengthy MRI of her tumor and God is good, saints. Amen. There was no bleeding. There was just a calcium buildup. Mm. But even with that, the calcium isn't an issue. And they're going to change her chemo medication because uh, the tumor had grown a little larger. But God is still good. Through He's still on the throne. All, he is, he's providing a way. And with faith, if we just hold on to our faith. Yes. There's bumps and bruises along the way. For all of us. But if you meet this little girl, you would not know that she had anything wrong with her. Mm. She's just as lively and cheerful and asking you all that know the word of prayer to please pray for her her name is harmony she's five years old her name is harmony 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 harmony, harmony. Yes. yes 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 and he's just building a testimony that some will have to tell her of her testimony when she gets older amen but god is providing god is providing I hope you'll pray for a friend of mine. Who, her name is Frances. She's her name is? Frances. Okay, Frances. She just delivered a little baby girl named Lola. And unfortunately, the baby daddy has abandoned them. Mm. It gave me an opportunity to do my own form of community service. Um, she'd been unwell prior to having the baby, and I was able to go yesterday and fill her cupboards with basics so she didn't have to worry. I'm very concerned how she's going to pay the rent. I've enlisted some other people that I know to take something each day for the next week. But please pray for Frances. Amen. She needs all the help she can get. And she benefited by our community service for clothing for her other two children that Shirley uh, made available uh, about six months ago. And the little boy got a jacket and he wore it to bed for a week. He wouldn't part with it. 
Amen. How about let's do one stanza of communist consulate. Thank you very much. One stanza, Miss. It always make me feel good. Just run with grace, humbly. Father in heaven, we just want to say thanks for allowing us to come to your house today for your abundance. Thank you, dear Lord, for Harmony and Francis, dear Lord. And all the other names that has been mentioned here today, dear Father. We know that, Lord, we are to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. You're worthy, O oh Lord. We want to thank you for allowing us to congregate here as a family, dear Lord. Help us to love one another. You said in your word, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And you, you, you've been loving us at home and speaking with us all at home, but you have brought us together as a family today, dear Lord. And you want to shower your blessings upon us as a family. And we're just so thankful, dear Lord, for what you do for us and our families each and every day. Continue, Lord, we pray, to watch over harmony. Continue to watch over Francis, dear Lord. Continue to bless each and every one of us there, Lord. We all, we are here this morning, Father, because we realize that we need a touch from on high. And we pray there, Lord, that you will come and be in our hearts today there, Father. Lead us and guide us. Fill us with your love, your wisdom, and your understanding. Equip us there, Lord, that we might be the individuals that you desire us to be. We know on our own, dear Lord, we could never accomplish it. But as we surrender all to you, dear Lord, whatever our problems, difficulties are, whatever they are, you can fix them. And we just want to thank you for that great piece of knowledge. Father, we want to thank you for our manservant that you sent to us to bless us today, dear Lord. We ask, Father, that you would touch his lips today, dear Lord, that the words that he speak may touch our hearts. And their Lord, we won't leave here the way we came through these doors. We leave here changed and praising your name, talking about how good it was to have been in the house of the Lord. We just want to thank you there, our Lord, abundantly for your love and for your mercy. We know it was there, there, Lord, because we are here. We are here, there, Lord, in spite of our problems or difficulties, our hearts are filled with joy because of you, there, Lord. We thank you and praise you this morning. Now, Father, we pray that you bless every heart, bless every child and adult, whoever's here. Remember this church here, dear Lord. Remember this portion of your vineyard. Help us, dear Lord, to continue in your work. We know you're coming soon, and you're coming for people who have surrendered and made themselves ready to go home with you. And we just want to thank you and praise you for that. And we ask all of this, your blessings, dear Father, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. 
Amen and thank you. Praise you, dear Lord. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Incline thine ear to Thy peace, Amen. Our trip, uh, scripture reading today is brought, uh, it found in uh, Matthew 16, 13 through 18. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, say, saying, Who do men say that I am? Uh, th who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, and on one said the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the, so the, so the Son of God. Jesus answered and said to them, Blessed are you, Simon, uh, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood was not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Our special music is brought by our speaker's wife, uh, Elizabeth um, Robin, uh, Robinson, and her husband um, will be speaking to us uh, after she gets done. His name is Joshua Robinson. I think other people know him. I did not, so I was attacking, trying to get some information about him. Uh, he's a retired physician from over in Orlando, and he is, um, he got his medical degree down in Mexico, or Colombia, and he, I, he got his medical degree in uh, Mexico, which is a extension of Loma Linda. And then he got two years of um, theology. And uh, we welcome you to our pulpit. After we had the special music. Thank you, sister. What a great and marvelous, powerful God we serve. We sing his praises for his bounty unto us, and we say, how great thou art, O Lord. When I 
in awesome wonder consider all all the worlds thy hand hath made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder the universe displayed then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When I think of God, His Son, not sparing, send Him to die. I scarce can take it in that on that cross. My burdens gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Shout of acclamation and fill my heart. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow. I shall bow. In gladful adoration. Praise the Lord. We have a wonderful God. 
Let's bow our head to ask the Lord for his guiding study of his word for this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being here in your house today, in your Holy Sabbath. Please be with us and help us to understand the life of Jesus and his mission when he came to earth and what he is planning to do to come and rescue us from this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> the sermon is entitled The Arrival and uh, it's a um, study of his work. And uh, we will uh, start first with the book of Revelation. So please uh, open your Bibles in Revelation and let's read as an introduction for the arrival of Christ's kingdom the book of Revelation chapter 12 gave us a summary of the plan of salvation Revelation 12, verses 1 through 5. Revelation 12, verses 1 through 5. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor, and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as he was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. So this is the arrival of Christ's kingdom. Uh, we have to, to see that uh, the Bible is a mystery book and the fact that it's a mystery it proves also that it's a divine book inspired by the Holy Spirit and this precious book tells us about two realms an unseen realm which is the heavenly realm and the visible realm which is the earthly realm so it tells us about both we can see what is visible but what is not visible we cannot see it it has to be seen by faith because we go walk by faith by grace and uh, the book of first corinthians First Corinthians, let's go to First Corinthians chapter two. First Corinthians chapter two. Verses thirteen and fourteen. First Corinthians two verses thirteen and fourteen. It says, These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches us, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritual discerned. The theme for this morning is also spiritual discern 
and we will talk about the arrival. Why the arrival? Because we all came separated from God because of sin in the Garden of Eden. The first couple fell and then we all his descendants had to have that faith. But the love of God was already with a plan to redeem us. So we are now 6,000 years after the fall of Eden in the middle of the great controversy between good and evil. And that's what we have been, uh, we have brought the subject today. We all love the cross. Or rather we say we love who died on the cross for us, right? But not only he came for this world to rescue us. He came also to vindicate the character of God on earth. And this is why in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 to 8, I inviting you to have a discernment about the cross, but even more deeper. Because we have to be According to Revelation 12, verses 1 through 5, that we just read, that this controversy began in heaven and then continued here on earth. And when the woman was about to, be, to deliver the child, who was Jesus, the dragon, the Roman Empire stood in front. Remember the, the story that we all love to remember during Christmas times about the wise men and the, the shepherds in the field and, and the birth of Jesus. And the King Herod said to the wise men, Oh, I would like to know who this child is. Please tell me so I could go and worship with you. Those were the words of the devil <laughs> to kill Jesus. Okay? Because in Genesis 3.15, we have the longest prophecy in the Bible, the first one. The one that the Lord said to the woman and the serpent that there will be two seeds. The seeds of the woman and the seeds of the serpent. But this, the seed of the woman would crush or bruise the head of the serpent at the end of the controversy. So we are right in the middle. And that's why we have to discern all these things in a spiritual manner. And this is what it says here. Let's read on. Verses, verse 6, 1 Corinthians 2. It says, Apostle Paul, However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, not the wisdom of this world, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the, the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. What it means here. And we will see it in a little while. These rulers here is the same term that we read in Ephesians 6. When it says there that we don't fight against flesh and blood. But against what? Principalities in high places. And that's why we have to go to Jesus to ask for his guidance and his strength. And it says, very interesting here, that is the forces of evil, Satan and his angels, and all these um, forces of evil would have known that by killing Jesus, murdering Jesus on the cross, they were doomed they would not have crucified the Lord. 
So, in killing Jesus on the cross of Calvary, they thought they had accomplished a good thing for them. But it was doomsday for them. Amen? Amen. So, this is uh, the, um, the, th the theme for this morning. And we will go in a little while to Caesarea of Philippi, where Jesus purposefully brought his disciple with an object to teach something very important for his kingdom. In other version, it says, Yet among the mature we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret, a hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So, they didn't know when Jesus came, what was the actual plan of Jesus Christ. Because there is no one single verse in the Old Testament that says how Jesus was going to come, die, and resurrect the third day. It, it is a mosaic in the Old Testament, like a puzzle. Okay? We can read in Isaiah 58 about the servant suffering, right? That that beautiful let's go there to Isaiah 58 uh, so they actually didn't know even the rabbis didn't know who the servant was because they thought about the Messiah that had to be a king uh, how the king is gonna be a servant they couldn't know they couldn't see the actual plan in Isaiah 58 In, in Isaiah, uh, we are told about the glory of the Lord and how this, uh, he, he would be the servant also. And how he suffered for our sins. So this plan of salvation had to do with the arrival of Christ first as the Lamb of God to be crucified in the, on, on, on Calvary, on Golgotha. But then the second part of this plan would be where? To be our high priest in the heavenly sanctuary. All right? So the cross is not just the... Um, it's just one part of the, of the plan of salvation. He had to have both. First the offering. And then the intercessory process. With Jesus as a high priest. And it's really a pity today. That most Christians don't know what Jesus is doing in heaven. Only the Seventh-day Adventist church. Preach about the heavenly sanctuary. 
and that Jesus is now in the most holy, in the, in the heavenly sanctuary, redeeming us, being the, doing the intercessory, because he is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, but he is also our high priest. So, we have come to the place called Caesarea of Philippi. Um, it's very interesting. That. We, we don't know much about the places in the Bible. Especially with an old book, you know. But when you read the place in the Bible you have to look up what happened there. Uh, most of us probably don't know much about geography, but who needs to pay attention to places and locations, especially in a book so old as the Bible? Yes, you do. For instance, uh, places are attached to its reputation. For instance, if I say Las Vegas, hmm, all of a sudden, we have images in our minds, right? If we say Washington DC, we have another picture. So each of these places names each uh, come with uh, own set of images drawn from important or ongoing events. We cannot see the, this place's name without all sorts of ideas and memories flowing to our minds. And we have come uh, to this Matthew 16 when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea of Philippi from Bethsaida where the gospel said that he was to Caesarea of Philippi is, it is 25 miles and they had to do it by, by foot and also walk all this distance who took probably several days to go over there it's also an ascension uh, trip because this place, Caesarea of Philippi, is located in the foothill of Mount Hermon, another very important place. So we have to think about the way ancient Israelites thought about it, because the Bible is a Hebrew book. So we have to see uh, that why this place has been mentioned. We have to know what is called the ancient Near East worldview. We have to understand this for us we, who are in the 21st century. So we can really know what it's all about. We have to know how an Israelite thought about this place, Caesarea of Philippi. This place was a forbidden place to go for the Jewish people. And I will explain that to the to you why. Uh, most ancient places uh, don't resonate, resonate with, with us since we know so little of their, of their history. But the biblical writers drop places names all the time and when they noted in passing that a biblical character like Jesus today in this sermon went for to a location or did something at a particular place the readers, that is the Israelites, knew instantly what the geography telegraphed. Okay. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And why he had to brought the disciples there? Let's go there. So this is about 30 miles north of uh, the Sea of Galilee. Uh, Caesarea Philippi is today called Banyas. But before it was called Caesarea Philippi, uh, this was a place where you remember King Jeroboam, the first king of Israel? He was an employee of King Solomon. Okay, and to him were given how many tribes? Ten tribes, right? And Solomon kept 
only two. Right? Remember that? Because of the sin of Israel. So Jeroboam, uh, he said, I'm going to be the capital of, of Israel. It's going to be, or it was already in Samaria. And he said, hmm, everybody's going to go over there to Jerusalem to worship the Lord. So I'd rather do a, a golden calf. And he did two of them close to this area of Caesarea of Philippi, close to the Mount Hermon. Why um, the um, why this place was forbidden for the Jews to go? Because this was a worldwide worldwide known place of evil. It was called the Gates of Hades or the Gates of Hell because pagan worship since the time of the king Jeroboam and all these Canaanite tribes used to come to worship the devil and the, um, the power of evil. So um, we see a, another view there. You see Mount Hermon and the, uh, another place called Nimrod Fortress. You remember Nimrod, right? Who was Nimrod? The builder of what? Babel. Of Babel. Okay, thank you. And we see here the Caesarea of Philippi. Sacred cave. Let's go a little bit nearer over there. This is another map. So located at the foot of Mount Her Hermon. Um, it's not well written there. It's Hermon, not Hermon. Hermon. Caesarea Philippi is located at the main source of the Jordan River. This is what is today. This is the place that Jesus was with the disciples in the scripture reading of this morning. Matthew 16, Caesarea Philippi. It was forbidden for the Jews, but Jesus had something in mind. What he has to teach? He has to teach about the kingdom of God. He was preparing his disciples. Disciples went with Jesus three years and a half, according to Daniel 9, the seventh this week. Jesus knew by the book of Daniel that when he started on the river Jordan with the anointment of the Holy Spirit, he would have three years and a half to teach the gospel to the world and prepare his own disciples to spread the word and the gospel, the good news of salvation. Only three years and a half. At the middle of the, of the, of the week, then what would be? The cross. And then what would be? Three years and a half more. When he said, don't go to the Gentiles yet. yet. Preach this to the lost sheep of Israel. He still has some hope that these people of Israel, had, finally, they could open their eyes and see that he was the Christ, the Messiah, the King of glory. But he came to his own and his own did not receive him. And we know about how sadly this three plus year and a half ended with the stoning of Stephen. And they were so angry because Stephen told them the truth. That's why the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians, we just read, that the natural man does not discern the things of the Lord. Because it has to be discerned spiritually. Otherwise, for him, it will be what? Foolishness. Foolishness. So, this uh, Caesarea Philippi has a cave. Uh, and before Jesus, um, by, by the time of, of, of Jesus, the water was coming from the cave. Okay? You can see there. But there was a big earthquake in the year 1000 after uh, AD, after Christ. It was a big earthquake. So the water were now, are now in, in another um, direction. 
okay you can see it down there the water okay so this is a big rock this is a big rock and we will we will learn something new this day okay and they came the ancient people came to worship in that place many many centuries before Jesus Christ would come to earth they used come to come to uh, worship the the, uh, the god Pan and they thought that Pan was a demigod half man half divine and he has the figure of half man and half goat and he was worshipped as the god of fertility not only couples have to pray for a new child to Pan in the ancient world to the pagan in the, in the pagan nations but also for crops to have something to eat and they would bring in their demonic worshiping that's why it was forbidden for Jewish people you know they would bring babies and they would throw the live babies the first baby writing us by words and they would throw them in that cave this is how the devil have really um, tried to really um, uh, put in a different light the love of the Lord okay they said that they have to appease the wrath of, of the gods and goddesses so this is uh, what is today it's a big rock and it's called by scholars the gates of hell but it is very interesting what the Lord Jesus said <laughs> because with him we have no fear right he is a strong we will see that even the, the demons witness about Jesus Christ amen we, we even read it in the first lesson of the Sabbath school in the book of Mark where a man came to the church on Sabbath and he was possessed he was demon possessed oh come on a religious demon oh yes sure no so in that time this is the depiction of Caesarea Philippi the name uh, be, before the Romans were the uh, Greeks so when the Romans came almost every place was called after Caesar so Caesarea but Phil Philip was a tetrarch of, uh, of Israel and that was his uh, his area of dominion so he named for himself Caesarea of Philippi and they uh, in that time in the time of Jesus they have in front of the cave the shrine to Caesar the temple to Zeus to Zeus to Zeus to Zeus and uh, this is another view people were worshiping false gods yes that's why had to come the arrival of Christ's kingdom because the Lord is king of kings and lord of lords and he owns all the places on earth or not the devil said this, this is my place that's not your place this is the whole world he has his whole world in his hand with no exception so that was the sanctuary of Pan that where the word pantheism come remember that in the um, in the bringing up or the building up of this church Seventh day Adventist church there was there was the, the Satan wanted to introduce to us the uh, pantheism and it was called the apostasy the alpha apostasy how, how many of you Seventh-day Adventists have you heard about the alpha apostasy that was in the time of Ellen G. White okay Satan attack the great uh, the um, 
uh, attacked the, the church to divide it. And uh, this is, was all about pantheism, which means that everything is God. Even your shoe is God, or stone is God, any tree is God. Hmm, no. And uh, so, this, this, that's the word. This is Caesarea of Philippi today. It's a place many people come to uh, see. That, that city, you know. So, they, all, they didn't only have shrines, but they also have um, the, the city there. No city, no more. Okay? So, this is the water coming out of that case, but through another route. So Jesus came to them, with them. So we continue. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist. It looks like the disciples still have some kind of a Greek philosophy. They uh, were probably thinking about reincarnation and then they say others say Elijah and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets but Jesus was interested to know about your personal opinion not about what other people say about Jesus the most important thing dear brothers and sisters is how you know yourself to Jesus and what is Jesus for you in your life what about you he asked who do you say I am Simon Peter answered you are the Christ the son of the living God when he said the Christ it means the Messiah okay Christ is a Greek term for the English term anointed. So when you say Jesus Christ, Christ, you are saying Jesus, the anointed one. And then when you say the Messiah, is the same word as Christ, but it's in Hebrew. So the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. And the New Testament was written in Greek. We have to know that. Okay? And Jesus Christ is in Greek. So uh, Jesus is, is in Hebrew, but Christ is in Greek. And he says, He's the Son of the Living God. Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. What it means? That it was not his own brain. Because he was very intelligent. Smart. You know? Uh, that means that no human revealed that to himself. But what? The Holy Spirit. But my Father who is in heaven revealed that to you. And then we say here, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. What is the rock Jesus is speaking here about? We know that Jesus is the rock, right? We, we read that in 1 Corinthians 10. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Right? Please open your Bibles, 1 Corinthians. Moreover, brethren, said Paul, Apostle Paul, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food which was what what was the food what was the food 
Okay, let's. I repeat. Okay. All ate the same spiritual food. What was that food? Eh? I don't hear you. The manna. Okay, which means in Hebrew, manna, mana means what is this? What is this? All the children, they will say, Mother, what is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? Mana, 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 mana. So it came, mana. That's the name for that food because who, when in the world this miracle has happened? Food coming from heaven? No. We have a very marvelous Lord. They were, how many years they were in the wilderness? Two million people in the wilderness. What they had as a shade in the day. What they had? A cloud. Oh my goodness. And what they had in the night for the cold. A column of fire. Wow. Don't you think all the other pagan nations were seeing how great was Jehovah, the Lord? Sure. And they knew the Lord of Israel was all powerful, the only true God. He even opened the Red Sea and drawn what? The whole, the most powerful forces on earth at that time. The forces of Egypt. How many survived? None. According to Exodus chapter 12. So they really uh, were uh, scared about the Israelites. So here um, we, um, we continue. And it says in verse 4, 1 Corinthians 10. And all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. That is the rock of Oreb. Remember that? In Mark 1, 23-28, the demons were worried. Satan and his angels. They actually didn't know what Jesus was going to do. Alright? They didn't know they didn't know that he had to come to die on Calvary. Remember the, the verse that we just read this morning? If they would have known, they would have not crucified him. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, that is a demon, and he cried out saying, Let us alone! What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of Israel. Even the demons knew who he was. But Jesus rebuked him saying, be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Then they were all amazed so that they questioned among themselves, you know, these Seventh-day Adventist church members were there. You know, they were keeping the Sabbath, right? They were Adventists. And they asked, what is this? What in the doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits. And they obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the regions around Galilee. And then there was another occasion for demons who came and witnessed about Jesus Christ. So they knew who he was. You, you, you get in the picture? Okay. But, but they, they didn't know. He, that's why he said, have you come to destroy us? He, he, he didn't know at what time the judgment, the judgment would come. The executive judgment. When he saw Jesus in Luke uh, chapter 8 verses 28. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said, What have I 
to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, Most High. I beseech thee, torment me not. So, in Matthew 16, verse 18, we will now focus in this verse. And we will know what is the actual rock Matthew 16 is talking about. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Doesn't go. Doesn't go more. All right. In the meantime, let's have some Greek language lesson. Okay. Some people say that the Pope in Rome have the keys of hell and the keys of heaven. No. He has not. He doesn't have it. Not at all. That's a lie. Okay. And they say that Peter was the first pope. Mm -mm. You have to learn a little bit of Greek language. Alright. Peter is the word Petros. Petros. I have it right there. We'll, we'll see it in a moment. Okay. Petros means a pebble. A little stone. And Jesus was just doing a plane of words okay because he was very marvelous he is the master of masters the great master <laughs> the way that jesus is he's the great teacher and he said peter you are just a little stone but upon this rock petra petra means a humongous rock all right like the one you just saw like the uh Petra means also like the rock of Oreb, which was also a big one. Doesn't go. All right. Uh, so there is a difference between Peter, which is Petros, a little stone, a pebble, and the word Petra, which is, means a huge rock. Thank you. So Jesus um, the first word there is Peter. The word is Petros. What is Petros again? A pebble, right? But he says, but on this rock I shall build my kingdom. So, brothers and sisters, we have to see the Bible in, in its own context. Okay? We have to see the context. Not to take the text out of the context. Because then we will just miss the, uh, the point. The rock that he's, he's talking here is the rock of Caesarea and Philippi. Where he said, and on this rock I shall build my kingdom. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In other words, there, are, there is a, a better translation for this in Greek. And the gate of hell shall not withstand it. So instead of hell beating the church, is the church beating the hell. Amen? Because Jesus is the Lord. You have to see how these demons were afraid of him. We have a marvelous Lord. In that uh, demon possessed man in Luke chapter 8, the gathering uh, uh, demon possessed uh, people there, he asked his, uh, the name. He asked them the name. You remember what was the name of them? Legion. You know how many soldiers were a legion in the um, in, in the in the host of, of Rome, in the army of Rome, between 3,000 and 5,000. So they were 
roughly 5,000 demons in them. Something very interesting. The desire of ages. Uh, you know that, that in that uh, event that happened, uh, they had the, Satan tried to drown Jesus and his apostles in the, in the Sea of Galilee. Remember? There was a storm. And Jesus stood up and said, be quiet, be still. He calmed the waters. But when he went to the other part of the shore, then they saw this man coming with broken chains. Nobody could really stand them. And you know what happened with the apostles? They started to run. And they run, 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 run for your life. These people are going to kill us. And then all of a sudden they stop and they say, What is Jesus? What is Jesus? Oh my God, this Jesus. He's in danger. Let's go. They went back and they saw these two demon possessed men kneeling down in front of the Lord Jesus. That's why you don't have to fear of the devil or, or, or dear brother and sister. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord Jehovah. He is the one that we have to praise and love because he loved us first. Amen. So, what is the rock in Matthew 16, 18? This is the, uh, the verse that we already uh, talked to you about. 1 Corinthians. Okay. That was the rock. The split rock of Oreb. Okay. You remember that they were uh, thirsty and they just wanted to have water, you know, and they were started to murmur against the Lord and Moses and then Moses has to stroke how many times the rock no the first one <laughs> the first time just one only one okay God, Jesus had only to be judged one time not two times because rod means judgment so this is now this, the, uh, the rock of Oreb. See? And that would be called a Petra. You know? It says in Exodus 17, 6, records God's instruction to Moses when the Israelites were dying of thirst in the wilderness. I will stand there before you by the rock of Oreb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So this was literal in the Old Testament, but then it's a spiritual discernment in Apostle Paul when he said in 1 Corinthians 10, and the rock was Christ. Okay? So, you already have this here. Do you know that this, this, uh, this city is called Petra? It's in Jordan. It was carved inside a rock. So, this is a very huge rock, you know? And this was also a, a lost city today. So Jesus brought his disciples to Caesarea Philippi to teach them this lesson. The lesson that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that he would build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So if you are with Jesus and you are in his true church, you have no fear to have because you have Jesus okay so this is the rock but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong 1 Corinthians 1 27 amen this is what we said we walk by faith not by sight This is the of Philippi. Very big rock. So, 
This is the wisdom of the cross. When you see the word archon, is uh, is the word rulers. It means just rulers, but it it doesn't mean there. It doesn't mean here. Uh, the human rulers. It means the evil forces, the rulers. Okay, like according to Ephesians six that we will see here. The word anarchy means no rulers. In Ephesians six twelve, for we wrestled not against flesh and blood. And this is the lesson for today, brothers. For you, for me, for the world. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That is, who has flesh and blood? Humans. Okay. Animals. But against principality, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. This is the same word in 1 Corinthians 2. That Apostle Paul is saying that if they would have known the plan of Jesus, they wouldn't have crucified him. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. We have a, a, a wonderful, a strong Lord. And uh, I pray that we have the same confession that John, in chapter 1, said, John chapter 1 verses 10. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. Many people will get lost because they will not know the Lord. Remember John 17 verse 3? What is all this life about? Because this is life eternal. To know you as the Father and the Son that you have sent. This is more important than wealth. That's most important than everything that you know Jesus today. That you come forward. That you give your heart to Him. And that you know Him through His Bible. Take the time to study His Word. He says, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. Why? Because they didn't know him. But as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. You believe in the name of Jesus? Whoever believes in the name of Jesus, please stand up. And then he says, for all those who believe in him, that we were born nor of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God because God is the one that gives us discernment is the one that forgive our sins and wash us with his own blood and gave us his Holy Spirit to understand our life and he said and the word that is Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth let's bow our head heavenly father we thank you this morning for the study of your word we thank you that you are our king you are our master please teach us from your word Teach us to know you, O Lord, and to walk a closer walk with you. Please bless to everyone in this church, O Lord, and those who have been watching us online also. You know all our perils, all our trials, all our worries, all our infirmities, and everything that worries us, O Lord. Please bless them. And help them to know the light beyond the light because this earth is in darkness but thank you O lord that we know the light the prince of light 
that is you, Jesus Christ. In Jesus we pray. Amen. in song. announcement to make. Um, all those who are in the skit for AY, Sister Leanne is asking could they meet her just for five minutes after church is over. Please. Thank you. Let's bow our head. Dear Lord, thank you for being our sacrifice so we could be saved. Thank you
you for giving us your son. Surely he was he has borne our grief and carried all our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Please be with us today and always, O Lord, and help us to have a closer walk with Thee, to open Your Bible, to read it daily, on a daily basis, and also to spread the good news to others who, who may not know about You. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. Thy is counsel's guide uphold you. With a sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet. Till we meet again.